This is CBS 2 News. Right now, messy mania grips the tri-state area. We're at Red Bull Arena, where thousands of fans are clamoring for a glimpse of the best soccer player alive. Plus, we remember a TV legend tonight, Bob Barker. The tributes pouring in for the longtime Price is Right host and his enormous contributions to daytime television. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jessica Moore. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Jacksonville, Florida, where police say three people were killed in a racially motivated shooting at a Dollar General store. Police say a white man in his 20s entered the store wearing a mask and a tactical vest, carrying an AR-style rifle and a handgun. They say he shot and killed two men and a woman, all black, before turning the gun on himself. No other people were injured. Police also say they found several Several writings that showed his intention left behind inside the gunman's home. The FBI is now investigating the shooting as a hate crime. We'll have more on this breaking story tonight on CBS 2 News at 11. The legendary Bob Barker passed away this morning at his California home. He was 99 years old. The iconic game show host entertained fans for more than 50 years, the majority of those right here on CBS2. As Dana Tyler reports, the Emmy-winning game show host leaves behind an enormous legacy. From its debut in 1972 and for the next 35 years, Bob Barker hosted what would become the longest running game show in TV history. Contestants guessed merchandise prices to win prizes, and Barker never missed a beat. You have your new car to drive down there in. Tell me. No, you can't drive to Acapulco, can you? Sure, you can. <laughs> Just go out to the Pacific Ocean and turn left. You'll get there. <laughs> Robert William Barker's first job was in the U.S. Naval Reserves during World War II. Barker was born December 12, 1923, in Washington State. He was part Native American and grew up in South Dakota on a reservation where his mother was a teacher. He loved animals early on. He married his high school sweetheart, Dorothy Jo Gideon, in 1945. In the 1950s, the college grad hosted radio shows and soon got his first TV game show, Truth or Consequences, which was a hit for nearly 20 years. I hope all your consequences are happy. Then, the job that would make him a TV game show legend and a catchphrase, a part of pop culture history. I want to know the name of our next player. All right, Bob, it's Walnetta Wesley. Come on down. I could say, Joe Jones, come on down. But Johnny said, Helen Smith, come on down. And it caught on. And now wherever I go, it, hey, Bob, come on down. Barker's personal sign-off became just as well known. His late wife had urged him to use his fame for animal rights advocacy. I'm Bob Barker for PETA. Barker was so committed after 21 years hosting the Miss USA and the Miss Universe pageants, he quit in 1988 when organizers refused his request that contestants not wear fur. Here's Diane. And Bob Barker made other headlines. Multiple models called Barker's Beauties on The Price is Right filed lawsuits against the show producers for mistreatment. Several women directly sued Barker. In 1994, Diane Parkinson accused him of sexual harassment, claiming he forced her to have sex with him. Barker said the relationship was consensual. Parkinson dropped her lawsuit in 1995, citing health issues. That same year, Holly Hallstrom sued Barker and the show, alleging she was fired for gaining weight and for not backing Barker's story about Diane Parkinson. Hallstrom won a settlement nearly a decade later. Despite the controversies, Barker continued to work. He played himself in the film Happy Gilmore in a fight scene with Adam Sandler. In 2007, he spun the wheel on an episode of How I Met Your Mother, where the character Barney believed Barker was his biological father. Here it comes, Barney. Weeks later, the 83-year-old retired from The Price is Right. In all, he'd won 19 daytime Emmys, including a Lifetime Achievement Award. Later, he made a few cameos. He played along, hosting WWE's The Price is Raw. You need to show me respect. Yeah. I'm respectfully asking for your bid. And he voiced the character of Bob Barnacle on SpongeBob SquarePants. But what really brought fans to their feet was when Barker went back to visit The Price is Right, as he did in 2015. 
He'd say he was always grateful for the audience's support. Uh, folks, I want to thank you very, very much for inviting me into your home for the last 50 years. I am deeply grateful. And please remember, help control the pet population. Have your pets spayed or neutered. Goodbye, everybody. Bob Barker will forever be remembered at CBS. In celebration of The Price is Right's 5,000th episode in 1998, the studio where the show is taped was renamed the Bob Barker Studio. On social media today, the game show reposted this message from CBS. It reads in part, we lost a beloved member of the CBS family today with the passing of Bob Barker. During his 35 years as host of The Price is Right, Bob made countless people's dreams come true and everyone feel like a winner when and they were told to come on down. Tributes to Barker are pouring in. Barker's Happy Gilmore co-star Adam Sandler tweeted, the man, the myth, the best, such a sweet, funny guy to hang out with. Loved talking to him, loved laughing with him, loved him kicking the crap out of me. And Barker's Price is Right replacement Drew Carey tweeted, very sad day for the Price is Right family and animal lovers all over the world. There hasn't been a day on set that I didn't think of Bob Barker and thank him. I will carry his memory in my heart forever. For more on the life of Bob Barker and his incredible legacy, go to our website, cbsnewyork.com. The greatest soccer player in the world is in New Jersey right now for a match against the New York Red Bulls. Fans are holding out hope Lionel Messi will take the field for Inter Miami. CBS 2's Christy Kalishian is at Red Bull Arena in Harrison, New Jersey, with all of the excitement. Jessica, there is truly no better day than today to be here at Red Bull Arena. The excitement, as you can see, is contagious, and all fans are here filling up the arena. And of course, as you can see, that, look at this. Look at this. You can see this sea of pink jerseys for Inter Miami. And some fans have been killing time before the game, playing some soccer in the meantime. And everyone here knowing that Lionel Messi, who's widely recognized as the best soccer player in the world, and possibly of all time might be making his MLS regular season debut here at Red Bull Arena. And I say might because he just won the League Cup with Inter Miami and played in all of those games and may need rest. And there's a chance that the game might start off without him. And fans here telling us how they feel about that. I would have a difficult time believing that he doesn't play at all. As long as he gets on the field and these kids get to experience the emotion of that moment, I think it'll be worth it no matter what. I'm sad. I'm like, hopefully he'll play. So we'll see. But if not, we're here. It's like a, a bucket list uh, event. And I'll tell you, tickets were not cheap. Of course, the game is sold out. Some fans were lucky enough to get their tickets for as low as $25 because they acted quickly. They bought those tickets as soon as they heard Lionel Messi was on the team. So sharing some optimism here for fans, once again, known as the best soccer player in the world, Lionel Messi, making his MLS debut here at Red Bull Arena. Live at Red Bull Arena, Christy Kalishian, CBS 2 News. Monday marks 60 years since the March on Washington, a pivotal moment in the civil rights movement. Thousands of people commemorating the historic day by gathering in front of the Lincoln Memorial on the National Mall. CBS 2's Natalie Brand is in Washington, D.C. Rosetta Mann's ball returned to the Lincoln Memorial, the same place she was 60 years ago when Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his I Have a Dream speech. It's all still um, very fresh in my mind. The 93-year-old brought with her mementos from the first March on Washington and four generations of family members. As I've gotten older, I had to figure out that each generation has to do their own work. From old to young, thousands showed up on this anniversary. Martin Luther King III says his father's work isn't done. Maybe one day we will be a great nation. We are not personifying greatness right now. But you know what? Dad and mom taught us it takes a few good women and men to bring about change. Bill High, a retired New York firefighter, says he stood 10 feet away from the elder king during his speech in 1963. We were excited that we were going to get recognition as being part of this country. High, who wrote about the march in his book, returned this year with his daughter. Why is it important to have this march 60 years later? It's, you got to be able to teach people where you come come from. If you don't know where you come from, you don't know where you're going. A reason, he says, it's important to learn from the past and keep marching towards a better future. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, Washington. 
and Monday night, join Maurice Dubois for a fascinating look back at this historic moment in time. Hear from families of key organizers and some who were there. The March on Washington 60 years later airs Monday night at 530 right here on CBS2. Still ahead for us tonight, sources say a man and his girlfriend are dead from a stab.